Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a great year so far. So, today's video is going to be a pretty uh, pretty quick little video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can make very quick, inexpensive uh, latex appliances. And this technique will work for small to medium sized appliances. So if you have, if you want to do a, a chin, a nose, or any kind of uh, wounds of that sort, uh, this will definitely work. So the first thing uh, I want to show you guys is uh, the the sculpture. So this is a, a simple little uh, wound sculpt that I did. Uh, this is done in Chavant. Uh, Chavant is a really good oil-based clay, so what that means is it doesn't dry. So that that's what's really good with this clay. Uh, it is a uh, firmer, firmer clay to work with. Uh, it's a lot firmer than a water-based clay, but it can hold a very well uh, detail in it. You can get a very good uh, amount of detail in Chavant. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. Bring it up for you. So this one is just to look like a, a really badly sewn up wound that you can uh, apply to an arm, leg, head, or whatever have you. Now the thing with uh, sculpting uh, appliances like this is you want to make sure that they you know depending on what your design for the uh, appliance is that you don't make it uh, there's a few things to watch out for the first is that you don't make it too thick especially uh, with this type of wound like this so for this type uh, like I said it could easily easily be going like right on the arm so you know right on the arm or a leg or whatever and uh, with me I like to try to keep a little bit more realism into it as much as possible this one's a little bit over exaggerated for like a fun little thing but this is just for demo but uh, the main thing is you want to keep in mind the thickness of the sculpt uh, so when I mean thickness I'm talking about how thick the uh, sculpt is coming off of the board because that's going to dictate how thick the appliance is uh, is going to be sticking up from your arm or whatever uh, place you're going to be applying this. So as you can see, this one has a slight little hump to it, but it's not like over exaggerated way up. Now, that only the, the course that works for this uh, this type of appliance. Now, if you were doing like a really tall appliance, maybe you're doing like a big kind of like spike head and maybe to look like like a big nails gone into a person's arm or head or anything obviously that would you know have a lot higher point to it but uh that also means it's going to be harder to mold so that's why it's like whenever i'm doing little appliances like this uh i do uh try to stick to easy simple appliances that are don't aren't too big so that way it just makes it easier for the molding process later and uh, just one more quick glance now if you can see that there's a there's a little bit of detail on it like you know it's supposed to be a little bit of like a skin detail but again uh, I, I just did this sculpt very quickly you know so it's uh, has a little detail on you know it, but it's it's not super realistic you know again this is mainly just for like a a quick little um, Halloween uh, makeup or whatever but uh, working with Chavant is a uh, is really uh, it's pretty simple once you know you know the uh, the tricks to it so the the, the one thing with uh, Chavant uh, is Again, it is a uh, oil-based clay. It doesn't dry. So, um, 
a few a few things to, to know when uh, when working with it. It comes in uh, three different grades of, uh, f of uh, firmness. You have soft, medium, and hard. And uh, th this is a uh, this is a soft a soft brand uh, brand. And uh, even even soft though, it is still very very hard. Um, but the good thing with the, it is that uh, heat softens it. So the more you knead it with your fingers, the softer it gets to, to where it's going to be really, really pliable. Uh, the other thing with Shravant is if you want to uh, really soften it up, if you're working with like a, a big batch, uh, you can use a, uh, you can build someone that love like a heat box and uh, you can put your clay into that and uh, that, that'll uh, help uh, soften it up as well. So uh, with, with Shavant, uh, any, uh, any normal little sculpting tool will work. Uh, here I just have a, a few uh, wooden ones. I just got these, uh, th these are just the I got these in a little uh, sculpting kit. I believe I got them from. Uh, uh, where did I get this from? It was either uh, I believe it was Hobby Lobby. Uh, so any little craft store like that, Hobby Lobby or Michaels, uh, they should sell some uh, similar uh, sculpting tools. Uh, these work really well. Uh, then you the. Uh, I also have a few of these uh, metal ones here. If you can see that, they have those little uh, metal blades on them. So these work very well with Chavant as well, and uh, water. Uh, these these can really work with the oil-based clay or water-based clay, but uh, they work very well with Chavant. So it's like, and uh, as far as using them, you really just you really do have to just. Uh, play with them uh, yourself just to uh, get a feel of what uh, tool does what effect and all that but um, like this one this one has a uh, little point to it uh, it's these are these are uh, I've been using these lately for uh, water water clay so that's what's all over them right now <laughs> I, I do need to clean them but um like little points like this these are great for making little like designs in the clay um, like the like like little wrinkles or anything in your clay so you know it, it just depends on uh, what design you're looking for um, and what tool can give you the the, the desired uh, effect that you're looking for so it really just comes down to you just playing around with the tools and finding out what works for you. So, um, so as far as uh, this sculpt goes, uh, the way I the way I got all these uh, all this uh, texture into it, uh, I just took a regular little uh, little nail. This is just one of those little uh, small little nails, and uh, I just dragged it. I just dragged it through the clay. And uh, I just I just kept going until I got to the uh, the effect that I liked, you know. Just kept dragging it. Now the way to uh, smooth Chavant is you have uh, two choices. Uh, the first one is a uh, you you can use alcohol, so you can use a isopropyl alcohol like this. And uh, what it does is it will actually melt the clay. Uh, it'll, it'll start melting the clay down. And uh, you, just, you, just, you just get a little bit uh, on, a, uh, on a little brush. And uh, you just start, just start working on the clay. You know, just keep working back and forth. And eventually uh, any rough spots on your sculpt, it'll smooth it out. Now when you're doing this technique, uh, keep in mind that uh, you will notice a somewhat white film start appearing, a whitish gray film start appearing, and all that is is it's just the clay uh, melting, and it's called it's uh, 
creating what's called a slip. And that's just the that's just the liquefied state of the clay mixing with the alcohol. Uh, it's completely normal. But one thing you do have to keep in mind with doing this technique is once you start seeing that uh, any details that you have, all that uh, liquefied clay is actually going to be flowing into those details and filling them. So that's what you have to be careful with doing this uh, alcohol is that if you do it too much, you will start erasing all of the detail that you uh, you cr you work so hard to put in. So just be just be wary about that. Uh, the next uh, technique you can do is uh, you can actually use a little torch. You can use a little bit of fire heat because, as, as I said, uh, this will melt with uh, heat. So uh, the one thing I like to use is I I like to use a little uh, hand torch like this. The Benzomatic, they're they're little uh, let me see, they're little pen torches like this. Uh, really easy to use. They just have a uh, simple little switch to turn them off and on. Uh, the main reason I like these is because they are, it's a pen torch, so I can hold it just like a regular pen, and it gives me great control over the flame, and so I can hit whatever specific spot that I want. I can go over the entire uh, sculpt, and I can control the heat, you know, basically, how close I get, how far away, you know, but... Uh, Again, it is melting the clay, so just be careful you don't melt your detail or your sculpt, you know. Uh, now, a warning, though, with using a torch is if you're like me, I like to use both techniques. I like to use the alcohol and the torch, but this is where it's uh, it, it can become dangerous. If you do use both of them, be sure that you do your alcohol first. And when you do, when you use your alcohol, be sure that it completely evaporates off your sculpt and off your workstation before you use the torch, because this is flammable. The alcohol will uh, catch your sculpt on fire and anything else around it. So be very careful with that. You don't want to burn your sculpt, yourself, or anything else. So if you do use the alcohol. Be sure you let it evaporate completely off your sculpt before you apply heat with a torch. And uh, these uh, these these little torches they are they they are really good. They have a little they come with little kits like this, different little heads. Uh, their main purpose is just soldering, but they these work very well for uh, for me for as I said. Uh, helping with the uh, the sculpts. Uh, now let me let me get back to the uh, the, the actual sculpt. Uh, <coughs> when uh, when doing appliances like this, uh, as I said, there's a few things uh, you want to uh, watch out for. And uh, as I, as I mentioned before, <laughs> I'm kind of backtracking here, but. You want to make sure again the thickness of your sculpt uh, because that will dictate how how thick or how tall it's going to stand out on your arm. And the other thing is you want to make sure that whatever it is, if there's any undercuts in your sculpt, uh, like uh, anywhere that the clay the the plaster can get trapped underneath it, and either combined with itself or just get trapped underneath to where if you try to open the mold up it's going to break. So like like on this sculpt I have these uh, stitches going across and what I had to be careful with was on this sculpt I had to make sure that uh, there was no passage passageway underneath the stitches so I had to make sure that it didn't go there wasn't a hole underneath the stitch so, so you know there was no uh, clear passageway underneath it because what would that that have done was as soon as I put plaster on this plaster let me give I can get a little tool so what it, what would it have done had there been a passage underneath this is plaster would have gone on this side and this side and it would have come it would have uh, they would have combined underneath the stitch 
and it would have just made one solid piece and so once I try to open that mold up that would have broke so that's what I mean by undercuts anywhere that the plaster can flow underneath it and if it's if it's deep enough it's just gonna break the mold so that's just you just want to be careful with that one uh, this mold the they do have a tiny bit under underneath the stitches just for you know realism but it doesn't go all the way through so that's just one thing you want to keep in mind uh, the other thing is also when uh, when making any appliances uh, the main goal is you want the appliance to kind of blend in with the surrounding area of the skin or whatever it is and so the one thing you want to make in, keep in mind is your edges you want to make sure that you feather your edges out very smooth and very thin uh, you guys might not be able to see it clearly on here but the edges of this appliance I have them I have them feathered out a lot they are they are they are completely feathered out uh, to where it's very very thin on the edges and what that's going to do is when I go and mold it uh, any appliance that I uh, cast into it after that it's going to end up with nice thin edges what you don't want is you, you don't want your edge coming you know have a big thick edge coming down to the thing and then just dropping off making a sharp corner or anything and so it's because then then that's like it's going to be very hard to try to blend that off into the skin so with these nice thin edges on your plants you know, you're going to end up with thin edges uh, on your finished appliance and it'll, it'll just make it easier to uh, to blend off into the uh, makeup for for the skin and then uh, another note is uh, you want to you want to uh, make sure that when you do your edges that you don't try to make them completely straight and smooth you know uh, you, you want to have it a jagged edge uh, because uh, a jagged edge is a lot easier to hide than a straight line a straight line will will sh uh, stand out like a sore thumb but a jagged edge you'll be able to blend that off a lot better and hide it so that's just a, another quick tip that you want to keep in mind okay guys so um, I, th I think that's uh, that's pretty much everything uh, you need to know about appliances just a uh, just just watch uh, watch your sculpting make sure uh, whatever you're sculpting doesn't have any like major undercuts um, if, if, it, if it does have a major undercut really plan out your uh, your molding well because like uh, if, if this was a um, like I said if this was a like a, a, a giant spike head or anything those would, those would definitely have a uh, undercut underneath them and so I might have to mold mold the uh, appliance uh, differently it might have to be a, a two-piece mold but uh, just you know but just for simple scarring uh, appliances like this or whatever uh, these uh, this this technique uh, works really well for it uh, so now that I've gone over everything with you guys the next step is uh, I'm going to take you through uh, just molding these. Uh, this is a very quick process, as I said, very quick and uh, pretty pretty uh, cheap to uh, to produce. So sit back, uh, sit back, guys, and uh, we'll start getting the molding. <laughs> 